You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is free fall in the kinematic equations. And we have one question we'd like to answer. How do you use the four kinematic equations to analyze the free fall motion of objects? Here we go. These are the four kinematic equations that you see here on the slide. In previous videos of the series, we've talked in depth about these four equations and the variety of symbols that can be used in different sources to represent the quantities within the equation. I'm not going to review that here, but you're welcome to go back to the previous videos in the series on kinematic equations and review it if you need to. I do want to say that we, what's important is that you just simply need to know what these symbols represent. There's five of them. The D's in the, in the equations represent the displacement or the change in position of the object. The A's represent the accelerations and of course T represents the time. You'll see that there's some V's in these equations. V stands for velocity and there's a, a subscript after the V. So a V with a subscript of O after it is the original velocity and if there's an F subscript after the V, it's the final velocity. One comment on displacement. Displacement represents the overall change in position of the moving object. Our objects in this video are going to be moving up and down, so that's a vertical change in position. On occasion, a problem will ask to determine the height of the object. What you need to know is the original position and then add the change in position to that. That's how you'd find a final height. When solving any physics problem, it's often helpful to have an effective strategy or approach to the problem. Our approach is based upon the idea that each of the four kinematic equations contain four variables, and if three of those variables have known values, we can easily solve for the fourth variable. So our approach or strategy goes something like this. We're first going to read through the problem carefully, and we're going to identify values for three of the variables within the equation. We're going to write them down and we're going to relate the values to the symbols used within the equation. Our second step is we're going to identify the, no, the unknown va value and we're going to write that down also in symbol form. Then we're going to look through our list of four equations and find the one equation that is going to contain these four variables in it. And we'll write that equation down. And then finally, steps four and five, we're going to substitute these three known values into the equation and then do some algebra to solve for the unknown variable. Solving a physics word problem is seldom a purely mathematical operation. You need to bring to bear conceptual understanding on the solution of the problem. In this video, we were going to be talking about free fall problems. And so one of the biggest conceptual understandings you need to bring to bear upon the problem is the fact that the acceleration of the object is negative 9.8 meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared downward. That means that the, that the velocity is increasing in the negative direction by 9.8 meters per second every one second of motion. Then you need to be on the lookout for words like dropped from rest or simply dropped or released. When, a, when an object's released from rest, the original velocity is zero. So as we solve problems, any term that has V original in it drops out of the equation. If you want to find the falling time in a situation where the ball is dropped from rest and falls straight downwards, you can use the equation you see here. The VOT term cancels from the equation and you can say D equal one half times negative 9.8 times T squared. That one half negative 9.8 becomes 4.9 T squared and it's negative and you can divide both sides of the equation by the 4.9 and then solve for t by taking the square root. If you happen to know the falling time for an object drop from rest, you use this displacement equation that you see here in the middle, and you use and you, you cancel the first term since it's dropped from rest, and then you just say the d equal one half a t squared using negative 9.8 for the a. And then finally, if you want to find the final speed of the object or the landing speed of the object, you use one of these two equations on the bottom line. If you know the time, you use the equation on the left, and if you know the distance has fallen, you use the equation on the right. Now let's take a couple moments to talk about an up and down motion where the object thrown from maybe ground level or close to the ground travels upwards to a high point 
and then travels back downwards to the original position or to the ground below the original position, somewhat like the graphic that you see right here. So the conceptual ideas you need to bring to bear up on such a problem as this were discussed in a previous video called free fall. Now, what we know for sure is that the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning this velocity is going to be changing by negative 9.8 meters per second every one second of time. We also know that as that ball travels upwards or whatever the object is, and it reaches its peak position, at that position, the velocity of the object is momentarily zero meters per second. And then we also know that at any two positions that are at the same height, the speeds of the object are the same. The difference is that the velocity is positive on the way up and negative on the way down, but they have the same velocity magnitude. And then if we use a kinematic equation, we can find the time it takes to get up to the peak, and it's just the original velocity divided by 9.8 meters per second. And we also know that the time to rise up to the peak is equal to the time to rise back down to the original height. These are conceptual ideas that we can employ as we approach problems involving an up and down motion. Here's our first example problem with the problem solving strategy listed to the right. Rex Things dropped his mother's face out the window's fourth story apartment 18.2 meters above the ground. Determine the time it took to reach the ground. So step one is I'm going to look through for three known values. One of these known values is the displacement. It's negative 18.2 meters, the distance that the vase traveled to the ground. Rex drops this vase, and so that infers that the original velocity is zero meters per second. And finally, the acceleration of any free falling object is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now I look for the unknown quantity. And I read the last sentence that says, determine the time it took for it to reach the ground. The unknown here is the time. So now I'm going to look for an equation that has in it the original d, a, and t. So here's my list of equations, and it ends up that the first equation on the list is the one that we need for this job. So I write that equation down, and then I cancel out the v original times t term since v original is 0 meters per second. That means that this displacement of negative 18.2 meters is equal to 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. A couple steps of algebra and you arrive at the answer of 1.93 seconds. Now here's our example number two, but it's the same as example one except for the unknown has changed. Rex things drop in his mother's face out the window of his four-story apartment 18.2 meters above the ground. So once more, I, I know 18.2 meters negative is the displacement. And I know the V original is zero. And I know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And what I want to find is the landing speed. That is the speed at which it lands on the ground or the final speed of the object. So I'm going to solve this problem as though I've not solved for time yet like I did in example one. So I'm looking for an equation that has v original, d, a, and v final. And when I scan the list, the one that has those four variables in it is the second equation on the list. So I write that second equation down. And I can cancel the v original squared term on the right side of the equation. So v final squared, the landing speed squared, is equal to 2 times a times d. I substitute known values of a and d into the equation. And then a couple of steps of algebra later, I have the final velocity, and it's 18.9 meters per second. Now here's example three. Eva Ball throws a ball upward at 23.4 meters per second. Determine the time it takes for the ball to reach its highest point. So when I scan this question, I realize I know that the original velocity is 23.4 meters per second, and I want to find something about the time it takes to reach the highest point. And what I know about the highest point for an up and down motion is that the velocity at that point is zero meters per second. So here's the three things I know. The final velocity is zero. The original velocity is 23.4, and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What do I want to find? I want to find the time, the time it takes to get to this highest point. So now I'm going to scan my list of equations for the one equation that has in it vf, v original, a, and t. When I look through this list, it's the last equation on the list that contains those four variables. So I write that equation down.
Now when I go to substitute values into this equation, the first term on the left side is zero, or the one term on the left side is zero. So I have zero equal 23.4 plus a negative 9.8t. I can swing that 9.8t over to the left side and divide each side by 9.8, and I end up with an answer of 2.39 seconds to get to this highest point. Here's example four, and it's just like example three, except this time we want to determine the distance of the ball above its initial position when it reaches the highest peak. That is, we want to find the displacement. So I'm going to approach this problem as though I haven't really done example three, and I don't know the time it takes to get to the highest point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to write down what I know, which is the original velocity is 23.4 meters per second, and when it's at its highest peak, the final velocity is zero meters per second. And of course, for free fall, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I'm looking to calculate the displacement, the distance it takes to get up to that highest point. So now I'm going to be looking for an equation that has in it v original, v final, a, and d. And when I scan the list, that's the second equation on the list, so I write that equation down, and then I go to substitute values that are known into the equation. And when I do, the, the left side of the equation is simply 0 squared, and the right side has two terms in it. One of those terms ends up being negative 9.8 times 2 times d, and I'm going to swing that over to the left side of the equation, and then divide through both sides of the equation by 2 and by negative 9.8. When I'm done, I get the value of d, and it's 27.9 meters. So the ball that Eva throws ends up being 27.9 meters above that original position of throwing when it finally gets to the peak. This is our fifth and final example. In this example, we have an up and down motion with a ball starting on top of a cliff, rising up to its highest peak and falling back down to cliff level, and then continuing to fall until it reaches the ground below. It says Jason stands on a cliff 24 meters above the ground and throws a ball upward at 16 meters per second. Determine the speed of the ball when it hits the ground below the cliff. And so the two numbers that I have given here is 24 meters, and that's actually the distance from the ground up to the cliff. So the actual displacement is going to be negative 24 meters. And this, uh, this 16 meters per second, that's the original velocity, and it's an upward velocity, so we'll call it positive. And then again, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What I'm looking for is the landing speed, or the speed of the ball when it finally hits the ground, 24 meters below the cliff height. And so I'm going to write down VF equal question mark. Now I'm going to scan my list of equations, hoping to find the one that has V original, A, D, and VF. And once more, that's the second equation on the list. I'm going to write that equation equation down, and then I'm going to be substituting into the equation the known values, being very, very careful to keep my positives and my negatives straight. And so here's the substitutions, and now with a few steps of algebra, you arrive at your answer, and it ends up being approximately 27 meters per second. So we've learned a strategy for using the four kinematic equations to solve free fall problems. And we've seen how that strategy is used in five different example problems. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you a learning action plan, a series of next steps to help make that learning stick. But before I do, I was wondering if you could help us out. First, if you like the video, could you press the like button down below? And if you really liked it, maybe you'd like to subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe to the channel, you can get notifications whenever new videos come out. And then finally, we'd like to ask you and invite you to leave a comment or, or, or a question in the, in the question section below. Okay, here's your action plan. First, at our website, there's a calculator pad section. It's an area where question or problems are presented, and you get an answer and an audio guided solution. If you go to the 1D kinematic section of the calculator pad, question number 25 to 28 require the use of kinematic equations to solve free fall motions. Second, concept builders are a great way to make that learning stick. And at our website, we have two concept builders. One's called free fall and one's called up and down. They'd be great ways to use what you've learned in this video in order to analyze free fall motion. And finally, if you just simply need a written reference, visit the tutorial at our website. You'll find in lesson number six is all about free fall. One of the pages there is about using free kinematic equations to analyze free fall motions. It's a great thing to try. Whatever you do, we wish you the best of luck.